Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. And in today's video, I'll show you how you can parse JSON data in Power Apps with a little help from Microsoft 365 Copilot. This is gonna be a good one. So as a quick preview, if you get any data in such a JSON format, then you can go ahead and extract it into such a clean format using a little help from Microsoft 365 Copilot. So stick around because you do not need to be a developer to do everything that I'm gonna show you. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. First, let me show you where I'm getting that JSON data. And in my case, it is actually coming from the Power Platform's AI Hub, specifically a custom prompt that I built to go ahead and extract data from these unstructured documents. And don't worry, I plan to do two, maybe three videos just on this topic where how I went ahead and created this custom prompt, what was the prompt I actually put in over here, um, where was the actual data, the entities, which was the original one, the file that I uploaded, and then also how I went ahead and created this JSON file, specifically the design that I wanted, because that's the one that we go ahead and send that into Power Apps. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna focus only on the Canvas app, and here I have gone ahead and made the connection to that custom prompt that I just showed you. But once again, I promise I will do a step-by-step -step video on how I did this extraction, two, maybe three videos. All right, so here we are in the Canvas app, and I just went ahead and did the design part of it. I mean, all you see over here is currently just the two screens, and I went ahead and used these screen templates over here just so I can get some nice design and responsive design. And then over here is the attachment. In fact, this attachment card is something that I stole from a SharePoint custom form, and that's what I put over here. So this part is all pretty simple. The design part is all pretty simple. What I wanna focus on is how I went ahead and actually got that JSON extracted. So right over here, in this buttons on select functionality, we've got this set bar. Basically what happens is this connection that we've made over here, that is basically a function. That function is what goes ahead and runs this custom prompt. So when I upload a document over here, and then I go and click on the on submit, this is the power effects function that runs and I go ahead and put in all the necessary information I need for this custom prompt, and it goes ahead and dumps that information in to this variable. So the first thing I wanna show you is what that data looks like, all right? So let's actually do a quick test. I'll come back in over here, I'll go ahead and attach this one data that I already have, and I'll go and click on Submit. Now we are actually using the custom prompt, and it actually takes about a second or two, so that's what it is doing. You can see what I call on the top as these ants that are marching over here, and it usually goes through about three, maybe four times, and once it's done, it will actually go ahead and have the data come in, and that's what I wanna show you. So it looks like it is finished over here. Obviously, there is no information we are seeing because we haven't actually added that yet, uh, but when we go and click on this guy, you will see that it's all in this variable. So let me show you that, all right? So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna go into our detail screen and voila, that it is. See, uh, I went and added this label and in this label is that same variable. See, this variable that we added over here, that variable, that is the one that I went ahead and added in right here. That's the one, far result dot text. So now you can see that this is the JSON data that is coming in. And now you and I need to go ahead and parse all this information so that I can present it in a nice clean fashion. And once the data is extracted in a nice clean way, we can even go save it somewhere. That's what I'm gonna show you. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and copy this and even figure out how the heck am I gonna do this? Because I know there is a parse JSON PowerFX function we can use, but how the heck do I go ahead and extract all of this? And for that, we are going to use Microsoft 365 Copilot. So let me come back over here because I need to go ahead and grab all of this one. All right, I did a copy. I'm gonna come to this copilot and I'm gonna say something like this. This is uh, help me parse the following JSON in Power Apps. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I spell that properly, Power Apps. And then I'll go and paste this whole thing. So basically this is all that it's going to be, all right? And now I'll go ahead and click on this enter 
And here we go. The co-pilot has already started doing some assistance. Uh, it is coming in and it's actually giving me a lot of information. It says, sure, I can help you parse this JSON. But one of the first things it's saying is that go ahead and take this JSON and put that into a variable. Well, that is something that I already did, right? Because when I come over here, that's the first step. When I click on the on submit, I'm already taking this JSON and putting it in this variable. So I'm gonna skip that part, all right? This part I'm gonna skip right over here. You see that step number two, which is the set function, then the variable, and then it says JSON, and then this variable right over there, that set function over there, that's the one that catches my attention. However, we have to manipulate this just a little bit. And remember, I said that we don't have to be developers, but hey, at least we need to be power users to do stuff like this. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just saying JSON over here, I'm gonna say parse JSON. Because let's face it, that's what we are trying to do. We are getting this JSON code, but we need a way to parse it. And there actually is a parse JSON PowerFX function. So what I'm gonna do is actually is highlight this part, all right? I'm gonna do that, do a control C, Let's go back to our power effects for that buttons on select. And then afterwards in this same on select power effects property, I'm gonna click shift enter and I'm gonna put this over here, right? And I'm gonna make a little bit of change. I'm gonna call this as a var parsed data. And then now I'm gonna say parse JSON because that's what I want. And then in that brackets, I'm gonna go and say the var result dot text. And I'll close it and I'll close it again. All the squiggly lines are gone. This is what we need to go ahead and start extracting it. We need another variable which already has the parse JSON of the previous variable, which is var result. Make sense? All right. And let me go to the next page over here, uh, screen. And there you go. The data is coming in. So now let's go ahead and start doing some extraction. So the first thing that I want to do is for the date. Well, let's go back over here, all right? And then see, the first thing it's asking is that, access the date value, it's telling me to go ahead and do this format, which is the parse data dot extracted underscore data dot date dot value. And it's getting this extracted underscore data dot date from the actual JSON. You see, because it went over here, it was actually the extracted underscore data. So depending on how your JSON code is, you may have to make that changes. But boy, the Microsoft 365 Copilot really made it easy for me because it saw, it referenced my code and gave me the exact PowerFX function that I need. That is why I love how I was able to leverage this. So for this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just highlight this whole thing. Um, I just gotta make sure that my variable name is correct because in my case, my variable is the bar parsed. Uh, so we'll just make that a little tweak, uh, but this is the text control that I put in. So I'm gonna put that, but I'm gonna actually say the bar parsed data. That's what I'm gonna do. And voila, I already got my information. Just to be sure, if I come in over here also, see, September 11, 2023, but it had all of this JSON code, not anymore, right over here, based on that PowerFX function that we got fully from Microsoft 365 Copilot. I just pasted it and bam, we just got the answer right over here. All right, so let's try to attack the second one, which is a little bit different. Why? Because let's go take a look at the JSON code. The first one was date, it is a single letter. Second one is three letters and there's a space in between. So if we go and take a look at the recommendation that the agent gave us, that's what it is saying. It says dot credit underscore application underscore process value. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this entire thing, do a control C, come over here, select that, paste it in our PowerFX place here, uh, and I need to go and add that prefix, all right? So I did that. And right now, I'm not getting any errors, but I'm not getting any data either. And I think I know why, but I'm gonna actually try to see if Copilot agent can make that recommendation. So I'm actually gonna just do this entire thing. I'm gonna copy it over here, and I'm gonna say, uh, this code does not work. And I'm gonna paste that in, All right? Let's, let's see what it does. Say, so, okay, I apologize for the confusion. It seems that there might be an issue with the way, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's coming back, coming back. Let's go back over here. And actually it did not give us any rec any new ideas over here, but it gave us a good head start that we need to go and put it in this syntax. I'll tell you what we need to go and actually add it in. So right over here, this credit application process, it actually did not have this underscore and that's what's throwing off power effects. So we need to do actually two things. First of all, come at the prefix over here, come over here. So first of all, come before on the credit and then I'll take out these underscores. That's what's throwing us off, all right? So I'm gonna come over here, take that off. 
And there you go. See, the answer directly showed up. That was the only difference is that the power effects was actually giving us the underscore application. But in our case, we actually need to go and put in that single codes. So that's a very power effects type of a thing. It's a very power effects specific syntax. And so now we need to just apply that and it works. But hey, again, Copilot Studio gave us a good head start because that's what it told us. You need to put it in this syntax and we just tweaked it just a little bit. That's pretty neat because this was the big one. Now, all the other ones are the exact same. So for example, if I come in now and take, the, take a look at the next one, just go ahead and copy that in. Control C, come back over here, select that, paste it. Uh, two things. First of all, I got to give it the correct variable name and then I'll come in right on this before, do a single quotes, delete the underscore, make sure there is a space and then come right over to the end, put another single quote and voila, the answer shows up. Let's go and finish up the remaining two as well. All right. So I'll come back in, go ahead and grab that one. Perfect. Right here. Come back in, paste that one in right here. Go ahead and add that variable one more time. And then I'll go and start my single code, delete the underscore, make sure I have some space. I almost missed that one coming in, add that code. And then we're getting these answers over here. And let's go and finish the last one too, because why not? Right. I'll go and do this, highlight that entire two, control C, come back in, paste, put in my variable name. And then one more time, put the single codes, delete the underscore, put a space. And there you go. Now it is giving us the correct information in clear text. We no longer go ahead and see all of this type of JSON value thanks to the assistance that we got from Microsoft 365 Copilot. So something to keep in mind is that I am not a person who works with JSON day in and day out. So when I run into situations like this, the ability for me to take the entire JSON code as is, paste it in the Microsoft 365 Copilot and just telling it what I want to do in Power Apps Boy, it took me about 90% there because remember for that date field, I literally copied and pasted it. All the other fields which had spaces in it, we had to tweak it a little bit. We went ahead and replaced the underscore and put the spaces inside the single quotes and it just worked. So this is the whole point. Copilot agents, that's why they're called as agents to give you the assistance. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully this makes your life a little bit easier to build Canvas apps and using Copilot as your assistance. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.